<laughs> Alright, uh, Daniela, uh, maybe you can tell us actually what have you been up to these days? Actually, I'm more busy than usual, which is kind of crazy. Um, just uh, recording my own podcasts um, and uh, getting ready for Australian Open, few projects here in Slovakia and just uh, close to my family. It's, uh, it's a nice bonus to have. Ah, I see. Uh, can I ask you, like, what was the transition like for you from a tennis superstar to a TV pundit? Like, do you enjoy it? It was such a natural transition and uh, it was also the timing of it. Uh, pretty much when I announced my retirement, the same day I went to the studio to do my uh, first, uh, first day uh, on, the, on the other side of, uh, of the camera. And uh, it's been such a beautiful journey. Um, I would, couldn't even imagine for for more, more wonderful second career. And I'm very grateful for that. It has opened so many uh, few things and projects that I can create, which uh, I always wanted to keep um, because as a player during the matches, you get to be really creative. And I always told myself, I wanted to keep going with that, whatever I do when I retire. Uh, during your first time, like, uh, doing the TV pundit thing was it as nerve-wracking as like for example when you played the semi-final of Australian Open? Absolutely not at all and uh, sometimes I was worried that maybe should I be nervous you know just because I found it so uh, natural to talk about something I've done all my life if I had to talk about uh, cricket probably I would be freaking out <laughs> or other sport but um, just because you know i just share what i've been through and what i see in that moment um it just makes it uh, really fun and uh, i think also because i've been used to the cameras around me since i was i don't know 14 15 it has pretty much become part of my life so yeah i think what was more stressful was the the, the long hours on the set that took me some adjusting to do the Australian Open is coming up. Maybe you could tell us one of your best memories for Australian Open or the best moments you've ever had. To me, just to take the part of the tournament was always a huge honor. Uh, definitely the highlight, I think it's uh, when I was able to beat Serena Williams. Um, you know, she had that uh, wins at the and then she lost to me and then she kept going winning again. So obviously being able to beat her somewhere where she feels so comfortable, that was very special. Who would you choose for the champion? I think to use the word favorite this time around, it's really hard because of all the circumstances and conditions we are going through. I think, um, you know, it just evens up the field big time. So I, to me, there are no more favorites. Uh, for this current uh, AO, we can see that most of the players have been posting on Instagram their quarantine uh, training, which has never been done uh, before. So how do you think it would affect the players like mental or their fitness? But well, um, fitness-wise, for those who had to stay 14 days and were not able to practice, it's going to be a huge difference um, because if you out, doesn't matter what kind of routine you do in your room, it's not really the same. Yes, it keeps you in some sort of shape, but, you know, talking about winning a Grand Slam, <laughs> you need a little bit more than that. For you yourself, Daniela, uh, what are you expecting from the Australian Open this year? Well, I think the main goal is that let's hope everyone stays healthy and that we can get through through the finals and we can have champions. I just got asked if, you know, the happy slam will be still the happy slam. And I said, as long as Craig is in charge and the uh, entire um, Australian tennis team, then uh, I think, you know, everyone is in good hands. All right, Daniela, I have to ask this question. On Instagram, I've seen that you post a lot of golf videos. So for right now, would you prefer golf over tennis or still tennis? Of course, golf. That's not even a question. I, I, I thought you were going to ask like golf or skiing. Then, then maybe we can think about it. But I mean, it, it, that's not even like, okay, next question. <laughs> this is an easy one. I go. Well, of course, yes, I absolutely um, love the game. I, I, I knew I was always going to play a lot while I was still playing because I already enjoyed it so much back then, but I never had the time or energy. So it's nice that uh, now I have the freedom. But to me, it's a closer call, uh, honestly, between golf and skiing because both sports just, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's that privilege that I have worked hard for to, to be able to enjoy now. Since 14 to 15, you've been used to the cameras being uh, on you. 
So do you have any like, f- like funny memories of you with a fan or anything like that? Uh, talking about the cameras that I so much enjoy. It's one of the reasons why I played because I enjoyed it so much. So when I was little and, you know, in a junior tournament, you are not going to play on set court with 20,000 people. But this is when I was around maybe eight, nine years old. And suddenly I wouldn't play on the main court in the little club, but on an outside one, I wouldn't even try to win. So my brother had to pretend like he was filming me. And then suddenly I would start to play much better. So that's me and, and, the, and the camera right there from the start. I see. All right, uh, Daniela, if you could combine the shots of every player that you can choose, what would be a perfect player to you? Well, with the surf, I'll go. I'll go with. Um, who do I go with with the surf? Uh, well, Sampras, forehand. Uh, I think Rafa forehand, fighting spirit Rafa, volleys. Uh, volleys, I take Tim Henman. Ooh, nice. Uh, Movement, just because of the grace, I pick Roger Federer. And for the elegance, I would pick, it's got to be someone from France. Well, I guess I still go with Roger as far as the, the, the charm of the, of the game. Did I miss any shots? A slice, slice back and I go Roger again. I didn't pick any woman. This is bad. Since you've been out of the tennis uh, competition for a long time, what do you miss most about the tennis life? Is it the competition? Is it the traveling or anything? That's a very good question. And I would say it's what we just discussed is that uh, attention, uh, that pressure that, you know, everyone's looking, everyone's watching and you gotta, you better come up with your best. Um, so I would, I don't know if I call it attention or adrenaline, maybe adrenaline more. Uh, and it's more to do with when you play uh, or make a, a shot that you never thought you could you could do. And it's those few seconds right after you get to celebrate with yourself. You just have that quick look at your team and, you know, all that hard work that you've been through. Um, you can feel it right there paying off. So I think I think those kind of uh, those kind of moments. Yeah, yeah.